thoughts, good, good girlfriends, homeboys, haters, and pickaboo bitches. There's so much more to your duty on duty. You can join our membership club where you get study hall, where we focus and study on our personal issues pertaining to us and only us, where you give special footage of video vlogs exclusively from your duty on duty. Yes! Oh, and a couple of family members too. But you can only see this in the membership club at www.patreon.com slash Lonnie B's members only. That's www.patreon.com slash Lonnie B's members only. Join today so you won't be left behind with keeping up with your duty on duty with all this exclusive footage and more. See you there. <laughs> Do you need a birthday shout out from your Judy on duty? Do you need a motivational speak? Do you want to surprise somebody with your Judy? Then all you do is got to go to www.cameo slash I am Lonnie B and your Judy will be available. That's right, girl. I can personally be on your phone to send another person a message. All you got to do is go to www.cameo.com slash I am Lonnie B, and your Judy on duty will be there for you and somebody else. Are you keeping up with your Judy on duty? Well, if not, you need to. Every Monday and Wednesday at 1030 Eastern Time, your Judy on duty is live in the Zamunda neighborhoods on Facebook at Lonnie B, Instagram at I am Lonnie B, Periscope at I am Lonnie B, YouTube at Chat with Lonnie. You need to be in the neighborhood so you can be live in Zamunda with your Judy on duty each and every Monday and Wednesday, 1030 Eastern Time. Set your alarm because we need Need you there and don't forget your bonnet aka your bob your robe your good morning bitch mug oh and your air condition and meet us in your neighborhood in zamunda with your judy on duty me lonnie b see you there Good morning, bitch! Yes! Did you hear good, good girlfriends, homeboys, haters, pickable bitches, nieces, and nephews? B Manage brings you the international Judy on Duty, Lonnie B. That's me! Okay? And a live show that you won't forget called Behind the Mask. Do they love you or the mask you wear every day? It's coming, girl. It's coming on Sunday, March the 14th, and Sunday, March the 21st, okay? 2021. There's going to be two shows on both days, 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. You want to get your tickets today at www.lonniebyourjudy.com. Now, this will be a COVID-friendly environment. Bring your mask, okay? And your hand sanitized. And if you don't come with your hand sanitized, we gonna sanitize you. Girl, kiss the lights for. Okay, yes. And we got masks for you too. It's gonna be at a secret location in the DMV area. Yes! We gonna check your temperature too, okay? Is you hot or do you need to eat some ice? Cause you gotta go, girl. Yes, okay? I can't wait to see you as we discover the love and laughter all behind the mask. See you there. Get your tickets today at www. Lonnie B, your Judy dot com.
Let me let y'all know something, okay? Before I bring on this legendary guest, okay? First and foremost, if you knew, because I see it's a lot of people in here. So if you're new, I'm a very colorful man, all right? And I speak colorful language. I get excited, okay? But it all comes from love, all right? Yes, I'm so excited right now, okay? Now, I have spoke to Monique. I have spoke to Queen of Comedy. I have spoke to Monique. I have spoke to Billy Porter. I have spoke to Ty Hunter. I have spoke to... Coco from SWV, Monifa. I have spoke to a lot of people, but today, bitch, okay, today, okay, is a legendary moment for me. And I respect and love all of those people, but today is a legendary moment for me, okay? Because I'm speaking to not just a person, I'm speaking to a creative director, a choreographer, a visionary, okay? The man that makes some of your favorite stars look like what they look like, okay? Now these are the people that I feel like we need to be talking to, okay? We need to be talking to these people, all right? Oh, amazing career since 1980, bitch. Okay, we in 2020. This man still pumping. All right? So today, we are going to talk to the legendary Frank Gaspin Jr. Put your hands together! <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, let me applaud you for your introduction of all that other stuff I saw before you came on. Congratulations, brother. Thank you oh, so much. Let me <laughs> say this. Go ahead. I had, I had to do this. You know, oh. I'll never forget seeing you sitting on that porch with that little pack, and you and you were sitting there, and you were talking about positive vibes. I mean, what? man, I've been saying ever since. You know, you just, oh, you're just so great. You know, and and, and you're the only one that could get me up at seven thirty in the morning here in L.A. So thank you for having me. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much. No problem, Frank. You are amazing. You are amazing, and people need to know it. You are the reason for a lot of these great artists. First and foremost, Frank, I don't know if you can see. Okay, let me see if I can fix this for you right there. Okay, you see that, Frank? I don't play. Oh, you see that, Frank? Oh, wow. Okay. Okay, I am a major, major fan of Michael Jackson. Like, I am one of those fanatics of Michael Jackson. And for me to learn that you got your career kicked it off being in. The smooth criminal video with Michael. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Gary. Yes, yeah, that, that, that was a blessing, man, to book that job right off the boat. That's when I moved to LA and uh, I went to the audition. Vince Patterson was the choreographer, and it was all these big time dancers that I had seen on TV and stuff, and they picked me, man. You know, and, and I'm really proud of my shot when Michael Jackson walks through the door. Have you ever seen that shot of the guy underneath the stairs? Yeah. And, look, and I look at Michael, that's me and my knuckles, knuckle, knuckles crack. It's, it was amazing. And, and, and people always ask me something like, what's the most amazing moment in your life? Right. In show business, meeting Michael Jackson. Oh, God. Okay. You know, <laughs> just his presence, you know. And I don't know why I remember his fingers. Mm. You know, they were so well manicured, you know. But he was just so amazing. And then he would stand there. He would be always shy, you know, like really humble. But when that choreography music started, he was like, he just gone. Like, like something just hit you, you know. And, you, and I'll never forget it. And I feel like meeting him so early on when I came to Hollywood is what set my bar so high. Right. You know, and that's why I think I'm this person who always says um, show business is not like church. Show business is not like a high school talent show. Mm -hmm. We are really doing professional stuff here. Mm -hmm. So I played basketball in high school, and I always remember that the coach would always get on you when you would miss the free throw. Go, go do 100 free throws or when you wouldn't do something. And that's how I treat show business. This is not a game. This is the real thing. And I think what's happening now, the work part, part is getting missed, the, the dedication. And, and Michael had dedication like I've never seen. He would always say, let's make history. It's amazing. Mm. Yeah. Wow, man. So did he ever speak to you guys as dancers, like give you guys advice? Of course he did. Okay. I mean, you know, I, I, I guess I got to share stories. I'm, I remember I did Dangerous. I was a, a choreographer by then. This is years later. I worked with Michael in 87. You know, a lot of people don't know that I helped on Remember the Time, but I uh, helped Lavelle and Travis with uh, Dangerous on the 20th anniversary of the American Music Awards. And we wanted this light. You know, uh -huh. you ever seen that light that Michael has? It looks like a, 
a, a tent. It comes right down over him. Yeah. And, says, the ground. Street light, yeah. Street light. Yeah. And, and I went up to Michael. I said, Michael, you know, the, Dick Clark and him, they're not letting us have this light. He says, Frank, don't worry. No, don't get into the politics. We'll get it. Don't worry. Don't worry. We'll get it. You know, and, you know, so he was just always someone who understood his brand. And, and if they wanted him to come there, give him what he needed. You know, and so, and also, he would always say to the dancers, "Let's make history." Mm. Everything he did, you know. So and yes, he did that, right? And he did that. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. You know, yeah, that's that Virgo thing. I'm not a Virgo, but it's something about those Virgos that they yeah, determine. They did. They dedicated. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now let me give y'all a background on my uncle Frank. Yeah, because that's who he is. Hey, uncle. Yeah, this is my uncle Frank. Okay. Now he is the creative director for a lot. Well, he did a lot of artists. In Vogue, Brandy, okay? He did Rihanna, J-Lo, okay? Beyonce, Destiny Child, okay? He choreographed for live performances, music videos, okay? For R. Kelly, TLC. Yes, bitch. Fifth Harmony, okay? Little Mix. Who was Little Mix, Uncle Frank? Oh, come on. London? I, I, England? I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a big group that was over in uh, X Factor in London. In they, London. They big time. They're big time. There's only three of them now. I think one of the girls just left the group, though. Uh, okay. Yeah. okay. Incredible group. Incredible group. Okay. Tony Braxton, mm -hmm. Usher, mm -hmm. New Kids on the Block. Yeah, my uncle was versatile. My uncle yes. versatile. Okay. Mm -hmm. Deborah Cox. And of course, Michael Jackson. Yes, he have a big, huge career. This, You are a black history movement, Uncle yes. Frank. You know, what's so funny, Lonnie. I, I, I don't. I, I never realized that that I've done so much into the pandemic. It's, re it's really okay. interesting. You know, uh, it's like you do all these jobs, you just keep working, you just keep working, you keep working, you keep working. But lately, I've had time to just sit around and look at stuff that I've done, and I'm so amazed by it. I'm I, like, I really, I, I want to pinch myself sometimes. Like you just, you, you do. But when you're doing it. You know, like right now, you know, I'm working with Brandy, incredible young lady. You know, you know, nobody knows that I did Brandy's first video, uh, I wanna be down. Mm. And if you see the video, there's a there's a letterman jacket that's in the room where she's laid, she's laying on the floor. That's my jacket. I still got that jacket, it's from Gap. Okay, it's it's, it's anyway, it's stupid, it's stupid. But uh, you know, but but Brandy's incredible, you know, she's doing big things right now. You know, I just did this thing and helped Todd Hall and Brandy do this thing called Cinderella. Well, I seen that, I seen that. You know, Todrick Hall is a my brother. Yes, yes. Brother can make anything dance. He yeah. can come into that room right now where you are and do a production number. Yeah. Uh -huh. and, and he did this in 72 hours. He, he called Brandy. Brandy just wanted me to come down to the set and make sure that she had her lines right and stuff like that. But he's incredible. And she was so beautiful. And, and she, it just, I saw it. I watched it 10 times myself. It mm. came out yesterday. Have you seen it? No, I didn't see it yet. I'm going to oh, go to see it. Yeah, it's, I'm like a, it's like a six minute video that he did to announce Disney Plus adding Cinderella. Mm. Unbelievable, you know. And then I just want to say, people forget that uh, In Vogue put me on the map. Oh, they did. So it wasn't my Sorry, choreography. Oh, oh, choreography. Like you know, people yeah, don't know that. as a dancer, right? Yeah, Michael was, a, I was a dancer in his first video. And then after working with In Vogue, I choreographed for Michael and was a creative director for Michael later right. on. Right, 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 right. My, my first job with Michael was a dancer under Vince Patterson. He's the choreographer. You know, I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have a headshot. You know what a headshot is? Yeah, a headshot picture. Yeah. Vince Patterson. When I went to the audition, I didn't have a headshot. I had just gotten off an airplane and, and went to the audition and just didn't have some. But I had a picture of me and my sister. I cut my sister out the picture, uh -huh. and I handed Vince Patterson this picture of me, like a, a, a little Polaroid, and and he laughed, you know, but he took it and he stapled it to my paperwork. And and I got it back later. I got the picture back. But isn't that interesting? Like something so stupid yeah. like that. But then in Vogue, people don't realize this. I had choreographed for the Miss Black Scholarship California pageant where Cindy Heron was a contestant. Mm. Okay. And I uh choreographed Cindy, you know, I, I and she remembered me when Involve got on. And so Involve wanted us to start working with them after Hold On. I didn't get to do Hold On. That's Carla Earl and some other young ladies. And 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 so in Vogue was auditioning all these choreographers like Michael Peters, uh, Lester Wilson, big time people, uh -huh. and and me and Lavelle and Travis went there being like a choreographer choreography team. We call ourselves the law firm of choreography, and and we had no credentials, and and we told in Vogue let us do it for free. 
And so they let us do my loving for free. And, if, and then we said, if you like it, uh, then pay us. And, and the rest is history. And I got three awards from in Vogue. See, that's, more than three. that's more than three. That's a lot of MTV. Oh, but some of them, some of them are in Beyonce's, you know, but there's three of them up there from involved. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. And three from Beyonce. Okay. So that's a blessing. But isn't that interesting that I, we had, like, we weren't big enough. We didn't have the credentials. And, you know, and, and some of the group members of involved wanted to go with Michael Peters. He was big time. He just done Thriller. Yes. Yes. Okay. You know, and, 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 and so, but yet they, you know, they believed in me, but they shout out to Cindy for remembering me from that pageant. And she took me to in Vogue. And, and, and so I always just want people to remember, they put me on the map as far yes. as who I am. And I would never, and I still work with them today. Yeah. You know, we did the billboard awards where they did free your mind was incredible. Uh, and also I'm not trying to toot my horn, but remember I, I was a manager too, and I'm still a manager. Toot it, my, toot it, Uncle Frank, toot yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I managed Tyrese in his early career. You know, uh, shout out to Tyrese, an incredible young man. Uh, and, 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 and we uh, parted ways when I went back to Beyonce as a creative director. In this right. style. And then I managed Luke James. Yeah, Luke and James. right now I manage June's yeah. Diary. Everybody go out and buy their EP, okay? <laughs> you know, we ain't got no record deal, but support these young ladies. They're incredible. Kelly Rowland and myself put them together on the Chasing Destiny show. I, I, shameless plug, okay? Get this EP. It's it's on uh, iTunes. Please get it. It's incredible. Yes. Yeah. So Uncle Frank, so you was born in Louisiana. Yes, Monroe. Yes, you was born in Louisiana, and then you moved to Wisconsin. Yes, Milwaukee. Okay, what was it like growing up? What was well, it well, I, 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 I love Louisiana, but I'm so glad my mama and them took me out of those woods. <laughs> you know, because we used to travel south uh, every year after I left. So I guess I was I came to Milwaukee when I was three or four uh, or five. I don't know if I forget. You know, those are young years. But 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 just imagine. The Frank Gatson that gets to do all these amazing things. If if my mother and father didn't move to Milwaukee, it, maybe that wouldn't wouldn't have happened. You just, that's kind of interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Because you'll see my cousins there. You know, they have you know fun down there, but it's just not. It's it's the country. We we right. you know, we're in our houses. Right. Uh, you know, I've seen a water fountain that said for colored only in Farmersville, Louisiana, in 1960s. Uh, five. Right. You never forget that. You know, so. Uh, so Milwaukee was great for me. It was a it, Milwaukee was a beautiful town, a perfect place for a family. Um, I I didn't get into show business until I was in high school. Uh -huh. And the only reason I got into show business in, at North Division High School is because the, the 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 choir it was called the A Choir. They would do trips every year, and I graduated in 1976. So they were taking a trip to. Uh, New York in, in, in Washington, D.C. for Bicentennial. And that's why I saw the Wiz on Broadway with Stephanie Mills and Hint Battle, and I was hooked. You know, they, they had those funky monkeys that would jump in the air like that and stuff like that. I said, I want to do that. Whatever that is they're doing, you know, and that's why the Wiz, the movie was so weird to me. Like the funky monkeys weren't as cool as the funky monkeys in the Wiz with George Faison and Jeffrey Holder. But they, 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 they jumped, they jumped like that. They was these beautiful black men that could dance their butt off and they were so athletic. And I'll never forget it. And that's what hooked me. Mm -hmm. I know I went somewhere else, but, but Milwaukee is an incredible place. Shout out to Arlene Skorowski, who believed in me, who lets me come back to Milwaukee. I got to choreograph and direct Dream Girls in Milwaukee with a local high school. I did the Wiz with Dream Girls in Milwaukee with a local high school. I did a tribute to Michael Jackson with the City Community Center. I, I love Milwaukee. Milwaukee is my, my place where I, I became Frank Gatson. Mm, and so then you left Milwaukee and then you moved to L.A.? No. Oh, wow. I, I, I graduated from college in 1980 from the University of Wisconsin. Uh -huh. um, I'm an Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity. I pledged, uh, and I should choreograph the step shows. You know, uh -huh. and, and I didn't know that was choreography, but that's what I was doing, I guess. And and then I was supposed to go to law school. Uh -huh. My father wanted me to be a lawyer, and and I met this girl downtown Milwaukee who, who was in this group called Up with People. Up up with people. You uh -huh. know, wherever you go, you know, up, up the people, they're the best kind of folks, you know. <laughs> if more people were for people, all people everywhere, there'd be a lot less people to worry about and a lot more people who care. Hey! Okay. Okay. <laughs> and, what other, and what other people was, it was this organization of kids from all over the world 
-hmm. that dance and sing to be a bridges of understanding between races and cultures. Okay, now I walked into the auditorium of Milwaukee, saw those people rehearsing, not many black people, and maybe two or three. And a girl had come up to me and said, what are you, you know, what are you here for? I said, well, I just see y'all dancing. They're dancing like 1920s. They're doing Russian dancing. They're doing Spanish dancing. They're doing country Western dancing. They're doing everything. And there's 100 students. And they travel all around the world. They, they tear the stage up. They set the stage up. They do everything. And I'm just back to like, wow. But yet I'm supposed to be going to law school in, in the fall. Mm -hmm. Right. And but so anyway, the girl came up to me and, and get this line. This is this is this is how God is. OK. Yes. Tell us. about. Yeah. You, know, you know how like in, in college you're supposed to take a language requirement and, and, and you, you know, people take Spanish, they take French, they take all that. Yeah. I didn't want to take that because, you know, University of Wisconsin, Madison, Spanish department was a beast. So I took um, Swedish. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but I took Swedish because I could recognize the words. Oh, like, okay. Stool meant chair, uh -huh. meant house, you know. So the words, I, said, I, I, I can do this. So I took Swedish. Now, skip ahead back to Milwaukee. The girl who came up to me and spoke to me was, was, was from Sweden. Oh. And I said, you more do. Yeah, had the Frank. <laughs> <laughs> she tripped. She said, "Why you know Swedish?" And, and, and that's Swedish. She, we started laughing and, and, and everything. And, and and she, I knew Swedish, so I spoke Swedish to her. And then she interviewed me for the, the group of people. I made the group. Our church helped me raise money. You know, because we didn't make money traveling and dancing. We would stay with host families. And I think staying with host families, we didn't stay in hotels. I think that's what made my people skills so keen and, and understand people because a lot of families we stay with in Spain or whatever, they didn't speak English. So you had to sit at the table and try to communicate. And, mm. but yet, but that moment I was with other people for three years. Okay. Traveling around the world. I was a token black in it. You know, you know, I, I was jamming. I could do all the steps, you know, I had other yeah. people. I, had everything. I learned yeah. so much, you know, but my training wasn't as good after I left over people. I went to New York. Okay. okay? And I got to New York, I want to be on Broadway, okay? Yeah. I, I've been traveling around the world. I performed in front of kings and queens and everything. And the, the Pope we performed in front of, everything. So I'm good in that aspect. But I get to New York, those kids got technique. They know how to twirl and dance and jump and everything. And I, I, I had a gift, but I didn't have the technique I needed. So I enrolled in Alvin Ailey and took some classes. I enrolled the Broadway Dance Center and took some classes. And I, 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 got, I was in New York. I had moved to New York after other people. I'm struggling, Lonnie. I'm struggling because you know I just can't make it. You know, I I I I I, I, I interview for a job at McDonald's the day before I supposed to start the job at McDonald's. I get with this auction firm and I get to work with an auction firm and and, and I make a little more money, but I got to go home because I'm broke. Yeah. Okay. And I go home and I you know and I enroll in the University of Wisconsin Milwaukee and I get a master's in theater and dance. OK, so I start I keep studying and then a lot of people don't know the story. And I don't know if I should share, but I'm going to share it because I love you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Okay. So TWA. Trans World Airlines, they went on strike that year and they were hiring flight attendants like that. OK, and I went and, and interviewed for that and got it. And so I didn't let no one know I was a flight attendant. I was like Superman. I would fly all over the world taking dance classes. I would I would go to auditions all over. As a matter of fact, when I landed um, a smooth criminal, it was because my flight attendant job uh, flew me to L.A. for free. You know, a $10 buddy pass. Yeah. And, and, um, and th you know, that flight attendant job, I did it for one year. And, and then I, it was on and popping after that. So I hope that all made sense. It makes a lot of sense. It's all in God's plan. It's all in God's plan. That was your destiny, Uncle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was I'm your right. destiny. Yes. Okay, so look. So you had three job titles. And I want you to define them, okay? Even if, if you recognize these as job titles. Well, wait, I, I have about seven job titles, but which three you're talking about? Okay, so let's let's talk about the three. Yeah, you do have a lot. Okay, so the three is choreographer, creative develop, create creative director, and visual artist developer. Artist visual developer. Artist visual developer. Okay, okay yeah. now define those three. Okay, well, I'll just start with artist visual developer. Yeah. What, I, what, I, what I found when I was a choreographer. A lot of the head people at labels and, and, and award shows, they really didn't respect choreographers for some reason. They mm. felt like all we were concerned about was were steps. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. 
know, we didn't think about TV angles. We didn't think about the star. We, you know, and I always say to young choreographers, if the star doesn't do your choreography, your choreography is irrelevant. Mm. Okay, you notice the choreography matters when the Beyonce or the Michael Jackson is out there hitting the same step. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. That's matters. So I came up with the word artist visual developer so that labels will respect me. I'm here to work with Tony Braxton to develop her visually. Mm. Okay. You you understand? Yeah. And that means it can mean hair, it can be makeup, it can mean how she looks on TV, it can be how she works her music videos, how she does her close-ups. So that's my term that I used okay. instead of choreography, a choreographer to get respect from the directors, from the record label, people like that. You understand? So when Frank Gatson came into the room, they 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 they, they didn't like me, you know, because I was very honest to the artists. I didn't blow smoke up their asses, and 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 I always thought of that because of basketball. You know, like you can't be these kids need honesty. You know, they don't need that. So that's where artist visual developer come from. And then a choreographer, you know, you know those are choreography awards. That's doing steps and stuff like that. And then uh, creative director, anything that you see usually a creative director is responsible for it. You know, like the stage they had something to do with, the lights they had something to do with, the right. dancers they had something to do with. You know, like me being a tall 6'2 guy, I used to always want to hire tall guys because I never wanted the girls to be taller than the guys. So I had, so that's got something to do with the creative director, the kind of guys that you hire, you know, uh, it's, 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 it's all, all those kind of things, you know, and, 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 and then I, I have to keep the word management in it but you know what a manager is you know yeah. so i did do that but as far as director creative director artist visual developer and choreographer did i that's it i think i answered the questions right you did, you did all that. but i love the word artist visual developer because i like that too i like that. Show yeah 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 i like that i like how you created that and i like how you did it because you want them to put some respect on uncle frank's name i like and, it. And, and i'm a commercial whore Yes. Now, what that means, people always like, you know, if you ever notice when you look at Beyonce's credits, there's like 10 choreographers. Like if somebody comes into my camp and they do an eight count, they're a choreographer for me for that moment. I'm going to give them credit for it. OK. Mm -hmm. And so I've always felt like. You know, it's, it's like, you, you remember Deja Vu? The video, Beyonce's? <laughs> Yeah. You remember Deja Vu on uh, the BET Awards? Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, Deja Vu on in the BET Awards, people just loved it, right? Yes. Then Beyonce and us, we did a video with just Beyonce and Jay-Z. Right? right. I remember we that. on it a little bit. Yeah. Okay? And so I learned a big lesson from that is that as much as me and Beyonce thought Deja Vu, the video was incredible, it ain't incredible until the fans say it is. Mm. So I'm like... Oscar Mayer Wiener, you know, that commercial is great. Or like, uh, you know, it's like you, it, we are commercial choreographers, so we can think it's great, but it ain't going to be great. Like people have been hating on weekends performance. I thought it was incredible. Uh -huh. Okay, You know, for, for one reason, he, his songs are big. He uh -huh. did his thing. He stayed in his lane and he hired 140 black male dancers doing COVID. <laughs> the kids were working, you know, so. <laughs> But, but when I look at Weekend's number, incredible production design, incredible lights. You know, everybody, and then people say, like, he's talking about he saw Diana Ross, and Diana Ross uh, did five quick changes. He did one. He didn't do any. But his dancers did five. All 140 of them. <laughs> you know, so I don't know. I, I shout out to the whole, like, Jesse Collins and everybody who worked on that, the young choreographer. Uh, uh, Lashama, Shama, I'm saying, I don't want to say her name wrong, but she was incredible. Right. And just every, every male dancer I've ever hired was working on that gig. Mm. So, so why did I get into that tangent? I don't, I don't know. So I'm, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Great job, Weekend. Great job. That's yeah, great, great job, Weekend. It's a conversation, yeah. Uncle Frank. We could just talk about whatever, okay? Yeah. But you know what I like about you too, Uncle Frank? One of the things that I was like, oh, I like Uncle Frank, is that you're very passionate with the, the artists you work with. Because I remember one time that you went on a defense thing about that trend that was going around where everybody was saying, poor Michelle. And you was heated. Oh. You was oh. like, it ain't no poor Michelle. Michelle is a great artist. You was really heated behind that. And I love that you stood up for her. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. And but why? What, but but you, it seems like you want to ask something else about that, though. Why I stood up for Michelle? Because Michelle is incredible to me. Right, right, right. Yeah, I yeah. think so too. I really do think so. I went to the live Destiny Fulfilled concert. Right. So and, I and, and, okay, okay. So now you get it. So just imagine Michelle being thrown into that group. Right. Okay. So when Michelle got into the group, I was still managing Tyrese. Okay. Mm -hmm. But many people don't know this, but Michelle is the reason that I came back to Destiny's Child after working with him for a while. Oh. Okay. Michelle came to a R. Kelly concert that I directed and choreographed, and, and she was just blown away by the show. You know, mm -hmm. and she went back to Beyonce. We need to get Frank Gatson get back here and do RTL RL tour. Okay. And I think what's interesting about that, M Michelle was thrown into Destiny's Child. She had a lot of catching up to do. Right. 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 So God, once again, hallelujah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Michelle sees me doing that show. I come back and she recognizes that I'm going to get on her butt to get, get, get up to speed. She recognizes that, you know, so so when you saw Destiny Fulfill show, now Michelle's had enough time to get up to speed with rehearsal. She 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 everybody's got to rehearse. Mm -hmm. Kelly and Beyonce already knew all that stuff. Right. They have been doing no, no, no. That's the first time I ever worked with them, you know, forever. They have been doing all that. So so people were so unfair to her. You know, it's just like me right now. I bugged you last night. How do I get on, on live with you, Lonnie? I don't know how to do this. I've never done this before. You know? <laughs> and I bugged you. And then you finally called back. I was two hours away from the house. You know, so it's like rehearsal is so key. Uh -huh. and, you know, Michelle gets a bum rap. You know, even when she fell down on BT, that wasn't her fault. She she didn't have the costume on long enough to rehearse in it. And and and, and, and her heel got caught in the in the thing of her her uh her, her her knee. Right. You you understand when you if like if me and you go out to a club right now we're gonna put our outfit on we're gonna say okay this looks good you know like yeah. I got my hair on right now because I can't comb my hair you know like we go and, and this is just this so just imagine if you can't get your costume sooner than twenty minutes before you go on live TV you might have issues right okay so so it's just one of those things that. Jesse Shaw was doing everything. They're so busy. They're so busy. They're so busy. They're so busy. And shout out to Beyonce for realizing that, you know, wardrobe is important and, you know, we got to spend more time with it and we got to put it on and see how it feels. And Michael Jackson was really good about that. He would make us have the hats. He, would have, he said, Frank, you know, Lavelle, where's the hats? We can't feel it. We can't get into character if we ain't got the hats. Oh, we need jackets too. We need jackets to rehearse in because the costume is part of the performance and you want to live in it before you get it in front of thousands of people. To, to uh, That's that's what, that, uh, oh, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm enjoying this, right? You know, yeah. Dance is my first love. Like dance. I, I see, I see. I see you doing your choreography. <laughs> Dance is my first love. I'm retired now, Frank. I can't do it like yeah, that. But you just, no, but you do stuff in your shows. I've seen some stuff. Yeah. Like doing routine and stuff. Dance is my first love, so I'm enjoying this. That's why I'm so excited about this conversation. You know, but, but Lonnie, you ain't done dancing. I'm 105, right? And all the choreographers that I know, I say, when you get a job age appropriate for me, hire my ass. Yes. I love dancing. Me like, too. I was, like the last thing I think I really danced in was with Beyonce on the 2003 BET Awards. And when you was hitting the thing like that, and she was yeah, right, exactly. You know, and I wasn't supposed to do that. What happened? You had to jump in somebody's spot at the last minute. Like, there's no shout out to Fly Burton. I love Fly. He's an incredible dancer. Beyonce is like somebody who becomes possessed when she performs, right? Uh -huh. So remember that dip that we did? Yeah. You know, she didn't feel like Fly would be able to hold her. Oh. She was gonna go in like that, okay? Uh huh. So she said, "Frank, you gotta go out there. You know, you gonna you gonna hold me, you know." And I said, "I ain't taking my old ass out there." <laughs> okay. And then I'm managing Tyrese at that time, okay? Right. I'm, Tyrese, I'm sorry, I gotta put you out like this, okay, Tyrese? <laughs> Tyrese is upset with me because his manager is on stage dancing. <laughs> And I, you know, and, and you know, and we laugh about it today. But you know, but I understood what he meant. But I said, I love dance. I don't care what you're talking about. You know, this is what I do. And but I didn't want. I, I wasn't supposed to be out there. But you know, your boss say, Frank, I need you to go out there. You do it. You know, right. And, and, and you know, then another stupid story. I had went to the swap meet and got me a pro club T-shirt. Remember those pro, pro club T-shirts? Uh -huh, uh -huh. And and I was gonna have my nice white crisp pro club T-shirt on. <laughs> and uh, and I couldn't find it when it was time to go on stage. I couldn't find it. 
So I go out there with the old uh, dingy T-shirt, if you ever see that performance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've seen but it. Also, something so special, too. That's when Beyonce just went to another level. Mm. It was like some sprinkly stuff fell on her that day. Mm. You know? And I was so glad to be part of that history. Mm, 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 mm. So let me ask you some questions, Frank. This is so good. This is so good. I'm just as excited. I'm not boring. This is, no, you're not bored at all, okay? <laughs> these videos are for me, and I really use these videos to help polish me as an artist. Okay. So that's why I appreciate it. So look, so what's your approach when it comes to working with artists? Do you have the same approach that you have when you're working with a Michael Jackson or a Beyonce that you would have with an upcoming new artist? Do you have the same approach or do you treat them different because of their name of who they are? Well, you know, I guess I have to say, first of all, I've been blessed to work with a lot of talented people. Mm -hmm. You know, I wish that Lonnie and Frank Gadsden owned a record company. Okay. Okay. You and I are getting in the car and we're going to find the real talent. Right, right. You know, there are other people in this world that is that are just as talented as Michael Jackson. There are other people just as talented as Brandy. There are other people just as talented as Beyonce. The list goes on. Right. So luckily I get to work with the Beyonce's and the Brandy's and the Michael Jackson's, okay? And so that's the blessing right away. Mm -hmm. I'm coming into a room and I, see, and I got a gift. In right. front. I'm proud to work with June's Diary. Those five girls can all sing. I'm yeah. proud to work with In Vogue. So, so, so the blessing, first of all, is that I work with people because I want to. Mm. You, did, did that make sense? I, I Usually when you get hired for a job, they say, Frank, we would love for you to work with so-and-so. I have the right to turn it down or do it. Mm. Okay? So that's really the first thing is that luckily I've had so many great artists that I've gotten to work with. Tony Braxton, you know, the list goes on and on and on and on. It just it just does. And so, so I'm all, okay. And then I got to say, you know, when so I'm in the room, I see this raw artist and, uh -huh. and, and, and I just, now I can tell them all my little tidbits. Like, right. don't hold the microphone like this. Uh -huh. okay? Now everybody does this because they think it's cool. Now rappers can get away with this, but a singer should never hold it. Look at all those nice little holes that you're missing where it can sound right. And, and, and the sound man, this is a nightmare. If somebody wants to create a mic where you can hold like this, do so. But, but to this day, no mic is created for you to hold it like this because you want to look cool. You know, I wish I could write a book. You're not a singer unless you know how to hold a, hold a microphone. So you always hold it below. So things like that. I'll start with stupid stuff like that or like a mic stand. You know, people always holding the mic stand. Like, why are you holding the mic stand when the mic stands? And you got your arms. You can live. You can go in. Like, okay, yeah. Right. You have no mic stand, okay? Right. Does that make sense? Yes. Like, yeah, if you ain't using the mic stand, put the bitch behind you. Right. <laughs> Okay, so 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 I guess I'm answering your question. It's like I I I just see what they do. I, the first thing I ask, do you? Let me see you do you. Oh, okay. Uh huh. And then I see what they're doing, and then I give my tidbits. You know, once again, going back to basketball, people know when you play basketball, you when you play defense, you should never cross because if you cross your leg, that the, the, the person's gone. You look at their waist. You look at their waist. Wherever their waist goes, they go. You know. Uh, you, you know, taking the baseline. So basics are so important to an entertainer. There are basics. You know, don't let no people stand in the wings because they're going to distract from your show unless you're a rapper. Rappers get away with a lot of stuff. You know, that, that whole thug thing and just being crazy and, and, and wild and, and rock and roll like that's their thing. But I work with a lot of singers and you want to make sure that they do the right things. And, and you know, and, and nerves are always going to be there. OK, like I'm nervous now. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so the way that I get through it is just by giving, right? Like giving all of Frank right now, right? Um, and 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 that gets me through it. And then also, I have this thing. You know what the Holy Ghost is, right? When somebody shouts at the church, yeah, yeah, I catch it all the time, Frank. I, I catch it once in that church. I, I know you do. I can see. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wish I could take whatever that is, and this is, you know, and I'm not trying to be something stupid against God and nothing like that. Right. But, if I could take what the Holy Ghost feels like and just pour it on an artist uh, uh. before it's time to go on stage, yes. Imagine what that's going to do to the audience when they connect with it. And right. uh, but but it's something so great to try to teach an artist how to break down that fourth wall, and 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 they don't. And the audience doesn't even know what they're getting. But usually, 
it comes from being honest on stage. You have to be honest on stage. Uh huh. You can always tell when someone's full of it. Uh huh. The minute they walk in the room, they full of it, you know. And but 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 artists can't be that way. They have to give. They have to open up and let the people get on them. You know, like I used to love when Michael would put his arms like like that and let something come down on him. You know, that stuff is a great. Do your arms like that right now. Oh, I, I can feel it. <laughs> yes, I know you can. <laughs> Michael Jackson has all the best lines. You know what a line is? What you mean, like a dance you line? Your arm a certain way, or oh, oh, a certain okay. way, a line. You know, uh -huh. like a line. You know, right. you know. Right. He has the best lines. He took all the best choreographic lines before he passed this earth. He's incredible for that. You know? Oh, man. Uncle Frank, that was a dream of mine. Like, as a dancer, I always wanted to work with Mike. And then when he passed, I was like, ain't no ain't no use. Like, because he, he was the only person in my eyes that I felt He's still, like, here, He's still here through others. Yes, he is still yeah. through others. I believe that because his legacy lives on. Yeah. You know, but he was the one that I wanted to be up there. Like, you know, Do you know Chris Grant? Um, Chris Grant, he's a choreographer, right? Yeah, he choreographed Coachella. He's a protege of yeah. mine that I've known yeah. for a long time. He was on Make You a Band. Laurie Ann loved him on there. Yeah. But I really think that Michael Jackson, people always trip when I say this, you know, he was a dancer for This Is It. Michael personally picked Chris for the This Is It. Yeah, he was in the video. I seen the movie. Right. I think Michael left his soul of dance in Chris. Mm -hmm. And you know, one thing I heard you say too, Uncle Frank, and it was in the DVD that I heard you say. And it was um it was the actual DVD was Beyonce, the ultimate entertainer. You said when you seen Beyonce, you seen the second coming of Michael Jackson. Yeah, well just so you can hear the story the right way. That's the first day I met Beyonce, Destiny Shaw, okay, Tavi and Otavi and Latoya. Uh never forget it. Vent Ventura and Violin, more landed studio. She had on a Terry Cloth white outfit, you know. Mm -hmm. She looking at me, I'm looking at her, and then she was like, who the hell is this? You know, and I said, you know, but they wanted to work with me because I had worked with it both. Okay. And baby, I rehearsed with them that day. I left out of that rehearsal. I called all my friends. I said, I just met the second coming of Michael. And 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 I even remember with Jermaine Dupri, I had said it to him one day later down the line. He says, what are you talking about? And, you know, and I said, watch. Watch, you know, and, and it was it just it was just something, Lonnie, you know. And I think that's my gift from being in up with people. Mm. My gift is to see. Uh -huh. You know, I like I like like artists artists will come off stage, Brandy, Beyonce's, uh June's diary, like artists I work with, they be like, could they come off stage and they ask all their click friends, you know, like, well, how did I do on stage? They said you was great. And they go like, where's Frank? He'll tell us the truth. Uh huh. That's you know, right. and, um, that's right. and so it's something about my gift. That's one thing I understand about me. Uh -huh. It's just that's why I adore you. Like when I saw you get up positive vibes, I'm like, who the hell is this? Okay, <laughs> this guy he could he could change the world with this positive energy he has. It's just so positive and so contagious. Like 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 what is that? You know, and and so that's why I'm here. You don't see me do mess like this. Not mess. I don't want to show a mess. Okay. I mean, I don't I don't like this kind of stuff. You know, right. I just want to do my job and and take care of my family and 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 and, and enjoy what I've been here to do. You know, that's right. what I want to do. Yeah. Yes. But you know what? I appreciate like I know a lot of the I know a lot of the new choreographers. I know of them, but people like you, I search for. I like the roots. I like the Debbie Islands. I like the Frank Gaskins. Like I like the roots. Yes, Debbie's incredible. Like people that in my position, we're supposed to sprinkle our shine on y'all. Yeah. Like I work with Debbie Woods. Oh, I work with Debbie Woods. She worked the hell out of us. Go on, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's another one that I love so much too. You know, because I like you. The reason why I like you guys so much is because you're full of wisdom and education and experiences. So that's what I really, really enjoy. I can learn a lot. So that's why this conversation is so important to me. Yeah, yeah. You know, I really want to start sharing my, what I know with people. I don't know. I don't know if I need to do it through a documentary, or film, or a book. Yeah. But, but I. But but thank you for that. I, I I've learned a lot. I've been mm. doing this. 40 yes, years you know? and um and and shout out to the young choreographers i have a lot of choreographers who've come from me like i, I should make a family tree like jamal sims Rosario mccoy jaquel knight todd sams dana hey, dana uh, chris grant um anthony burrell it's like a long list of people that i feel so proud and they and they'll call me for advice here and there 
but but shout out to all those people who trusted me to uh, open that door, and, and I love what they've done for me. Like like I like I, I feel blessed that I have such a big family tree when it comes to other younger younger choreographers. Yes. And I'll call, I'll, I'll call them like Jaquil. I call him every time I see a Megan the Stallion video. I'll be like, that's nasty as hell, but I get it. Okay. <laughs> 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 like, like Uncle Frank, this is what I want to ask you too, because this is something that I love about you. Because a lot of people, like in this YouTube um, world, they don't do this. When you do this, you share your position. You share your position, Uncle. That's important. Frank. Yes, it's important. You know, like, like somebody that was in charge of Beyonce will probably be selfish, but you call people and right. give them that shot. That yes, is right. amazing. But that's important. Yes, but people don't know, you know that. Like, like, did you make that those videos that just started this, this interview? Did you make those videos? No, I actually had somebody to do it for me. And they did a great job. Yes, shout out to Ed. You are, okay, so you, you know, we can't do this shit by ourselves. Right. Okay, you have to share your light. You know, like, like if I did write a book, like I, I said, I, I, it would be called Share the Light, Sparkle Brighter. Mm -hmm. You know, and and I learned this from a guy one day. I was venting about something. Uh, Philip Block, he's an amazing stylist, and mm -hmm. and I was tripping on something. He says, "Frank, you didn't do that by yourself. There were other people." He said, "Share the light, sparkle bright," and I'll never forget it. So you know, like 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 the biggest stars share that light. Like mm -hmm. you know, like Brandy shares her light with me all the time, and I love and respect that. And she doesn't have to do that, but I feel like. You know, Michael Jackson shared his light with people. You know, you knew who Lavelle Smith was. You knew who Janet Jackson, Tina Landon's choreographer. You knew who Anthony Burrell was. You knew all these people. And 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 I feel like when artists thank the people who are helping them become this great big artist, that's important. And that's sharing your light. So share your light, superstar, and you mm. will spark the writer. Mm. Mm. So let me ask you this, Uncle Frank. Okay, so. I was watching something else behind the scenes with you and Beyonce. And Beyonce said to you, Uncle Frank, she said, Frank, because y'all like to go to different shows and Broadway stuff and stuff and see other shows. She was like, Frank, we got to stop going to these people's shows, taking their stuff. They're going to stop letting us come to their shows. And then you was like, everybody does it. <laughs> no, but you know, but, but I just think that we, I'm just honest about it. Like, just let's go back to Michael Jackson. God rest his soul. I respect Michael in my, all my life. Everything's been re rehashed. The mm -hmm. way that uh, the way that the singer may, you know, like like I always get I always get sick of top singers like, oh, that's a Fred Hampton, like bro, that's a so and so's the run. Oh, that's a uh, uh, Brandy's run. Yeah. Or that's a Lisa Keys run. Oh, that's a whatever. You know, you ever hear singers talk like that? Yeah. yeah. And so singer, other singers take that exact run that someone else does and puts puts it into their show. Right. And that's doing that to me. That's the same thing that Beyonce and I are doing. If we see a single lady's reference from Bob Fosse's um, wife doing the Breakfast Club, mm -hmm. that's a reference. Okay. Mm -hmm. Michael Jackson. If you look at Smooth Criminal, where where did that come from? Um. I'll tell you, that come from Bandwagon. There's a movie called Bandwagon with Fred Astaire and Sid Reese. We have the exact costumes on from Bandwagon. Take Everybody take a look at the movie Bandwagon. You'll see Michael Jackson's white suit. You'll see the girl in the red dress. Okay, where did Beatty come from? Tell me, Uncle Frank. West Side Story, the whole circle. Oh, yeah. you better educate me, Uncle Frank. Okay, where, where did Thriller come from? Yeah. Where, 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 who? Thriller. Um, it comes from a Bob Fosse movie. It, it escapes me right now, but but Paul Abdul in Michael Jackson borrowed the concept from this movie of Bob Fosse. The kids are on a scaffolding, and the kids walk down like that, like Thriller reference. Thriller comes as greatest Thriller is. No one knows that it came from Bob Fosse's movie. Okay, okay. The the, the setup, the way that they move their hips when they come out, they do like that. They do like that. So. It ain't just Beyonce. It, 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 everything's been done. And, and, and what I love about those old things that uh, Beyonce or Brandy or whoever, Michael Jackson, those people were incredible when they did stuff back in the day. Those musicals. See, that's my dream is to bring back the musical. Mm. Okay. I tr like this is a musical right now. In a minute, those moon men back there are going to start dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And, and you know, you always doing a musical. <laughs> your, your opening was a musical. Okay, so so why 
what is it that people don't respect musicals enough to see that it can make money? When they did the movie Chicago, I thought that was incredible. That's my favorite musical that they did in these days. Mine too. Yeah. I like okay. I like Chicago. I like Hairspray too, Uncle Frank. Oh yeah, that's great too. Yeah, uh -huh. Jamal Sims did that. That's what somebody that I worked with years ago, young man that's a great choreographer, uh, Jamal Sims, and uh, incredible. But 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 wouldn't you just love to do a musical? Like again, like when I heard Mary J. Blige not gonna cry no more that song. Yes, I said that's that should be in a musical. Mm. Okay, it's something about that song that should be in a musical to me. Okay, so I hope before I leave this earth that I can bring back the musical. You 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 understand? Yeah. Like I want to do that. I want to do musicals. Like like after seeing Todrick and Brandy work the other day, I think that Todrick and Brandy should do the the real Wizard of Oz. Yeah, I know, and you tagged me in it. You said I yeah, should. I did. Be yes, you're right. You know, you said I so, should be the doorman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Todrick will be an incredible uh, lion, the lion, mm -hmm. and Brandy will be an incredible Dorothy. Yes, she still looks beautiful enough to play Dorothy and young enough. Uh, you would be that man at the door of the Emerald City that opens the thing. What do you want? <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> the is not here. Okay. <laughs> You remind me of that guy so much, but this needs to be a multiracial cast. You know, we right. got folks, Asian folks, Mexican folks, everybody. You know, Latin. That is amazing. You know, and, amazing. And, and and do the original songs. I love the Wiz. Don't get it wrong, because the Wiz is what made me be in show business. But when I saw them doing Cinderella the other day, and doing those songs in my own little corner, you know, biggie bob, biggie, I was like, dang, they could kill them. Because the Wizard of Oz is incredible. It's incredible. It's incredible. You know, mm. And you know, and everybody who knows Dorothy understands that. Did you enjoy the Wiz? Oh, oh the Wiz, but, but once again, you, you're not listening, Lonnie. Remember, the Wiz is the reason I'm a dancer. When I went to Broadway in high school, yes, remember? Yes, yes, you sat there in the audience. Yes, the Rocky Monkeys? Yes. Now, like, I love Donna Ross and Michael Jackson. I love the actual movies when Michael Jackson down the yeah, road. I, see, I love that. I ran to go see that because remember the Wiz with Stephanie Mills and Hidden Battle and right. Ted Ross and all those folks. They're the reason that I'm in show business. So I was so excited to see the Wiz with, with uh, Michael Jackson and Donna Ross, and they were incredible. But wow. I was mad because they made the monkeys be on motorcycles with bad teeth and bad breath. <laughs> and the monkeys I saw. <laughs> you understand? I saw these amazing men that could dance their butts off. You understand? But the Wiz was good. But I love the live version more. Just just my opinion on it. Like I love the live version of Dream Girls more. That Dream Girls is very important. That's where I I learned from Michael Peters and Michael Bennett to make men dance like men. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, have you ever seen the original Dream Girls on Broadway with Shirley Ralph and Loretta Devine and uh, Oprah Babbitt too? Oh, okay, we, we must be done. No, we not. Oh, I can see now. You still here? We not dead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, you, you you understand? Like, like, like that changed my life. So, but I love the Wiz. I love the music, the songs. If you can believe in yourself, those songs are so motivating to anybody who's going down. Home is incredible. But I'm just saying, after working with Todd the other day, I just think a remake of the original Wizard of Oz with a multiracial cast, with you playing the doorman, Brandy playing uh, Dorothy, and Todd playing the lion. I think Netflix needs to give them $50 million to do it tomorrow. Wow. And you be the director. And you be the yeah, director. I, I, I would co direct it with Todd because Todd is incredible. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> so, why is it so important for you to say that men should dance like men? Because that's what they're being hired for on stage. Mm -hmm. So, do you respect guys that dance in heels? Of course, if that's okay, that's okay. You, you, I think you're missing it up. If I got, if I got some male dancing, you like. Let's go back to my commercial world, okay? For okay. Me. Let's okay. go. We're not talking about art. We're talking about commercial dancing. I got to hire ten guys to carry Beyonce in. Right. Well, I got to hire ten guys to dance next to Brandy, and they're being hired as men. I don't care what their sexuality is. I don't care about none of that at all that's that's unimportant to me who fucking who okay you know right. who cares right but, right but i think what you're doing especially with black artists is you're, you're hiring men to be men that's it right okay and 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 that's it so but i've been to many shows where i've seen some guys hitting the heels better than anybody you know uh and like but that's not what we're talking about we're just talking about like, like, remember when I was in Milwaukee, the reason I hadn't studied ballet is because I was scared that everybody was going to call me uh, sweet or something. 
Right. So I snuck away to the ballet classes. Oh, okay. So, so when I became a dancer, I wanted to show people that you, you can't be judging a guy on the way they dance and calling, making them be gay or whatever. You know, that, that's irrelevant. And, 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 and then I think the thing that I realized is that it's genres, you know, it's like what you're being hired for. You know, I don't, I don't like hiring guys with hair. I was even tripped out with you. If, you, if your hair moved, I didn't want it because I didn't want the, the people in the audience to mistake you as a girl. Also, I realized that when you go to dance classes, there's only one guy in the class. And so a lot of guys start moving like females because there's no one else to copy. So I used to love when I was at Alvin Ailey, there was a gl- class full of only men. So us men, we were like, well, who can jump the highest? You know? And once again, it ain't got nothing to do with sexuality. It's just that you're being hired to be a man, period. You know. And then sometimes, you know, like I saw a show with Ariana Grande where she had a guy dancing in heels. That was what the choreographer wanted. He was wearing it out. He was like, where did I? I was like, wow, okay, cool. But 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 it's it just it's just that dream girls showed me that the guys could really dance like men, you know, and 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 it, and, I, and I don't know, that's maybe that's the wrong way to say it, to dance like men. Is is that they they just was just they just had a a swagger. That's a, a cool ass or they was given the masculine points of the dance. Yeah, exactly, you know. So, so it's just, it's just, but, but, but once again, like I remember one time we hired two guys on Tyra Banks with Beyonce to do single ladies. It was hard. It was hard. It was hard to cast that. A lot of guys that could have killed it with Beyonce in heels with single ladies, they didn't want to do it. But we ended up with Sean Bankhead and John Tay, and they didn't, they wore it out. I don't know if you've ever seen that performance, have you? Yes, I did. Wasn't on Tyra Banks' show? Yeah, on Tyra Banks, you know. So, you know, that's that was one of the few examples where we got to hire some guys that they still dance like guys, and that was so interesting, but they were in heels. Uh. They hit, they had to hit it hard. And that day, they made Beyonce hit. She had to work it, you know, because <laughs> men in heels are going to be stronger. Uh. That's just a natural thing. Do you ever come across the point where you have to tell the dancers to tone it down because certain artists couldn't keep up? Do you have moments like that? You don't, you don't, you just don't have to ever speak it. You just know what you're doing. Right. You know, you don't have to say it. You can see that there's an uh, artist that's not really hitting that choreography, you know. But what I used to hate when an artist used to want to say, don't put that girl next to me. Oh, okay. That's the politics of things, you know. Uh, I, I, I never liked that because I always truly believe that you want that energy that's magical next to you because it's going to push you. Mm. That you know, you don't want a poop button near you, you want somebody right. who's going to bring it. It's going yeah. to go back to the basketball analogy. I used to hate to play with scrubs because they they did they 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 would make your game worse. But when you play with people that were better than you, your game went up. Right. You know, so if you got dancers around you that are hitting it, your game's going to go up because it's going to make you hit it. I hope that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Yes, it does. Wow. So look, as a manager, what do you look to achieve for June's Diary? Well, you know, uh, June's Diary uh, is is something that, like Kelly and I, like father and mother, birthed that group. Uh-huh. You understand? Yes. And, and and I first of all look at it like that, like like if I'm the father of these five young ladies or uncle, I I got to go to the end with them. Uh-huh. Yeah, you you understand? And 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 people feel like that's what makes a. a uh, we're backstage again. Oh, that's you. That's just, uh, it. Just does that. Sometimes it just showcases you, Uncle Frank. Okay. So okay. See. So, yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, so I, I, I lost my train of thought. There. <laughs> Go ahead. You talk about June Diary. What? Yeah, yeah. 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 So 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 basically, you know, the girls had a, a record deal right out of the show, Chasing Destiny, in 2016. Uh, they had the deal for about five months, and then L.A. Reid left the company of Epic, and then we didn't have a deal anymore. So since December 2016, they've been on my dime 
And, and it's been it's been hard, you know, because I only have two dollars and, and and we've been in there trying to do people. People are always like, why don't they do this? Why don't they got a video? Why don't they got an album? Why don't they got this? You know, that stuff costs five girls is expensive. And I just think they're an incredible group. And I just want them to um, make it. And, and I'm going to do everything I can to make sure they make it. And we're making it right now. People do like them. If you look at their video on YouTube right now, have you ever? The comments are incredible, you know. But uh, we just need we we just need a company now. We need a backer, you know. That's where it is right now, and that's what we're trying to achieve. And and we pray, you know. Um, we we try to stay humble. And I and I and I and thank God the girls stick together because you know they got jobs, they got husbands, they got all kind of stuff. But they stick together. And I think this pandemic has made us focus on what we need to do. Right. You know, uh, managing someone like Tyrese uh, was was great because he came to me with this successful Coca-Cola commercial and it was easy to make him ride, you know, and 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 then he went on to do movies. So, you know, and I wish Tyrese would get back into music more. You know, I think he's getting ready to do Teddy Pendergrass and, and I think he's going to do an incredible job at that. Hopefully. Bio, a bio pick. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, um, you know, and um, and and I think he's. I know. Hopefully, he just you know does everything that he needs to do to get in shape for to be Teddy Riley because he has an incredible voice. Oh. Luke James uh, is someone I met when I was managing Tyrese. Luke James is incredible, but Luke James comes from a group called Upscale. Luke James is somebody I'm very proud of. He's acting now, you know. So management is like a mama or a daddy, uh -huh. you know. And I think that's why families that the mother and father manage. That's why those groups do so well because their family is there telling them the truth. Mm, yes. So how do you keep your talent attractive to the artists, to the new artists? Because you know, you are one from back in the day. So when these new artists come out, what makes them so attractive to want to work with Frank? Wow. Um, how do you keep yourself so yeah. You know, I'm working with a new artist right now. I, I can't talk about it yet. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to answer that. I, I, I would, I would think I want to work with that old ass crazy motherfucker. You know, <laughs> you know? I, I think that's what they would say. You know, but I'm, I, I'm not crazy. Uh, I'm just passionate. I'm that's, right. that's right. You know, I, I, I know what I'm talking about. Um, I have a saying. Um, when we, if we come up with something creative, you and I right now, we got to check our egos. Mm -hmm. When it's right, the whole room will agree. Okay, but most people always want it to be their concept. I'm not like that. I don't care if the concept comes from an ant. Right. If it's right, it's right. Right. So, so hopefully, young artists that see my passion and see my wisdom and 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 see my commitment. You know, I, I'm. You know, people think I'm really expensive. Um, and I so so therefore I don't get a lot of jobs because they think I'm really expensive. See, they forget that I manage, so I know how to work with a group or act, I know where they are. I go look at their billboard. They ain't got no money. They can't get this. They can't charge this. You know, they got, I, I got to only charge $2 to them, you know, you know, you know, so, but, but yet I get the choice and say, I believe in you. That's right. Uncle you know, so yeah. so I, I would hope, shout out to any artist that wants to work with me. I'm not expensive. Mm -hmm. I work for where you are in your career. I understand you ain't got no money, but just don't forget about me when you start making money. Uh, that's right, Uncle Frank. That's right. Yeah. So, Uncle Frank, what's your thoughts on the Instagram dancers getting jobs over the dancers who have been in the industries for years? You know, Lonnie, you know, I just told Todrick the other day, and I hope nobody steals my concept. But, you know, have you been watching these TikTok dances of these? Yeah, young, yeah. Especially the young black guys. Mm -hmm. Very good looking black guys. Mm hmm. They're doing stuff, uh, they do something, they smile, and they just know they look good. And, and so it kind of rewinds in my mind when I wanted to be a dancer. But now to see all these men just go out there, and you don't know if they're gay, straight, or whatever. You don't even care. You, you understand? Uh -huh. But but I would love to do a show with all these good-looking TikTok guy dancers and make it be like a TikTok soul train type thing. Okay. Because when you watch these young people, Especially the men that I've seen. The women are great too, but the men got something else on them. Maybe because I'm a male dancer, I'm noticing that they have a vibe that's really wonderful. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine a show with these young, good-looking black guys 
and and, and it's kind of like a soul train show and they because all the lyrics relate the choreography relates to the lyrics you know like the way they do stuff have you noticed they do things that yeah. say the lyrics uh -huh. so i think it's incredible right it's incredible and if i had a million dollars i would shop a show right now called a tick tock black <laughs> So do you, but do you think it's fair to the dancers that have been in the industry for years and they get overlooked because of the Instagram fa fame? Well, well, you know, so you just open up a can of worms just now, okay? <laughs> There's a lot of professional dancers who don't have training, okay? And I always say to all the professional dancers that don't have training, like, have you ever seen hip hop dancers who don't want to do a pirouette? You know what a pirouette is when you turn? Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I was you know, yeah okay, exactly. Like. I, I I I don't see the difference. Like they're kids who just naturally come out the womb dancing. Right. And a lot of the working dancers, they see like like a dancer like Ashley Everett. Uh -huh. That's a trained dancer who can do it all. You see her on a, you see her on Mass Dancer. You see her on Dancing with the Stars. You see her with Beyonce doing this. You see her with Sierra doing this. You see her with Brandy. She can do everything. So that's a professional, professional, professional dancer to me. But then there's some dancers who can't do everything. Like Chris Grant is an incredible dancer, but he's never trained. Mm. Jaquel Knight is an incredible choreographer, but he's never trained. They just have experience from doing jobs. Yeah. So, 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 so some of these kids that come on TikTok or something, they're just good dancers. Now, what I would say to them, and I would say to anybody who's trying to be a dancer in this business, train. Don't you ain't trying to become no ballet dancer. You're not trying to become a jazz dancer. You're not trying to become a tap dancer. But get that little bit of training. So when it's time to do that step that you don't understand, you understand it as a professional. Just like somebody operating on my heart. They need to the train to know how to do that. That's right. That's right. Okay. So I just say to every dancer, even a new TikTok dancer, go train, take a class. Because because West Side Story, the new movie, uh -huh. that's gonna change the world. I can't wait to see it, Uncle Frank. Okay, you know who's directing it, right? Who? Steven Spielberg. Oh, yeah, that's going to change the world. Yeah, but there's there's trained dancers in that movie. Mm. And they're going to up the game. You know? And I think also, when you look at the dancers who shake their ass a lot yeah. nowadays. Yes. Now, I always take pride is when we did a, a dancer dance with Beyonce, they shook their ass too. They did. So I sound like a hypocrite. But what, I made, but what I told Beyonce, we need to get trained dancers to do that, okay? Because they're going to pull up a certain way and not make it look bolder. That's right. That's right. They're partial. Okay. Yeah, yeah you're right. right. Okay. So, so I would say, like, it's nothing wrong with shaking your ass, but when you got a little technique, you know how to shake it like a lady. Right. Come on, Uncle Frank. <laughs> <laughs> so what's, what's your opinion when it comes to... What's the downfall of a lot of new artists and dancers? What's your opinion on that? What's the downfall? The work, the rehearsals. You know, you know, that's you know, you, you need a month if you're gonna do a live TV show. You need a month at least. If you're doing a tour, you need a year. You know, and 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 that's and a lot of times you don't have money to do that, but it, you can go, you can go in the basement and get your show together. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. I was saying with you and just somebody else. So you got to do the work. You you got to when you come into rehearsal, you got to put the phone down. Because you have work, you have work with artists in the living room and stuff. Right. You, yeah. It's, I call it basement choreography. Yes. You know. Yeah. You, you got to do the work. You you, mm -hmm. you can't you can't have nobody in the room looking at you. Like I locked the door when I'm rehearsing with artists. Lock the door. They be like, why don't you want them in here? Because they're gonna be distracting me. That's I'm, right. gonna feel, I'm gonna feel the hateration over there. I'm gonna feel them looking at me, judging me. I can't do that. We need to be free to be like Michael, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, so so a lot of young artists don't understand that. You know, keep the door locked until it's the cake is baked. That's you right. Know, uh, you know, you know, don't. But 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 because you're moving so fast, you may not be coming up with your greatest work. Uh huh. So you got to rehearse. You got to plan. You got to rehearse. You got to plan. You got to have a great team who's dedicated, you know, not in the room like, well, you know, I'm Frank Gatson and, you know, I can't be in here with you right now. I'm going to bring my assistant in here, okay? No. Yeah, no. Frank yeah. Gatson needs to be in the room. I don't care how, what he's done. Right. You know, That's because right. he was hired to be in the room. So, you know, there's a humility that an artist has to have, too. Right. Like, stop being, you know, like, you know, Michael and Janet, they were like, thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. Because people already think artists are full of shit. So if you come in there with your head stuck up and everything, you, you're you not going to get what you need from the team. Right. So I think humility is important. Rehearsal is important. Planning is important. You know, getting the information correct is important. Good light is important. So many things. Right. So, Uncle Frank, let me ask you this. When you're working with the artist, do you work with the artist and the dancer together or you get the artist first and then the dancer? I think the, the best thing to do is to workshop with the artist first. Okay. To see what they want to do. Oh, okay. You okay. understand? Like a lot of people usually workshop with the dancers and then you come there and the artist's like, what is this? I ain't had nothing to do with this. This is not what I want to do. So right. you really get in the artist's head and know what he or she wants to do. Right. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so yeah. do you feel a lot of big name artists overshadow the people behind the scenes who create the magic? Say that again. Do you feel like a lot of big name artists overshadow okay. the people behind the scenes that really make the magic? Because a lot of time we don't know okay. who what. Okay. So that goes back to share the light sparkle brighter. Right, 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 right. I mean, I'll never forget when I worked with Tony Braxton for the American Music Awards. I don't know if you've ever seen it. We had like 50 dancers. They opened the show. Yes, so I did. Hard, you know, and, and, and then I was I was I was so emotional when she thanked me when she got mm -hmm. her award that night. Mm -hmm. And she even said, you know, a lot of times people don't thank the people behind the scene, but I just want to thank Frankie, Frankie, Frank Gatson, you know. And so I think if you if you if you if you say their name, that's gonna bless you mm -hmm. because you didn't do it by yourself. That's right. That's you right. By yourself, you know. And like sometimes people forget. Some people just don't do it because maybe they were taught. Don't give somebody name recognition. You know, it's so many reasons that you don't hear about the behind the scenes people. But I think it's always incredible to thank whoever. You know, like right now, I'm a Topic fan. Okay. Me too. I saw him. I've seen his stuff before, but I saw him in action. Mm. Comes in the room and just sprinkles fairy dust on shit. And it just, it's, it's coming. <laughs> yeah. I love him too, Frank. I love him. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, I, I, I saw the stuff and I was always like, wow, that's great. That's great. But to see it in action, you know, my hat's off to that brother. Mm -hmm. You know what I appreciate about certain um, dancers, I mean, young yeah, artists um, like Janet. Michael and uh, Beyonce, they always have these moments in their concerts where they showcase their dancers. They put their dancers' names up. They shout yeah. them out. Like, I love that. And a lot of artists don't know how important that is. Yeah, but that's sharing the light. Yes, that's sharing the light. You what that means. Share the light, sparkle brighter. Yes, I love okay. that. Because then I get to see certain people that I be inquiring about, like for a long time, Uncle Frank. Okay, this girl she used to dance with Beyonce back in the day. Okay, Aisha. huh? Aisha, come on, Uncle Frank, <laughs> come on, Uncle Frank. And she premiered in Beyonce's um, Black is King, and she was pregnant. Mm -hmm. Yes, beautiful. that was beautiful. I love that woman, Uncle Frank. Yeah, she's oh, she dances. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You know, see, yeah. I, 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 I can I can see her right now at her first audition, walking across the floor. You know what a back bend is when you lay out in the back. Yes, yes. Her, her head was on the ground, brother. She and did then, that when Beyonce did that tribute. Yeah, right, right. That, that wasn't her soul. She kicked, and then she went into a split. Right. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that was the concert. That was um Beyonce experience. But I'm talking about when she performed with Beyonce when she did the tribute to Tina Turner at the Kennedy Center. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You saw that? Yes. <laughs> yeah, that, that <laughs> internal choreography is hard, boy. Oh, <laughs> yes, you know, and I was you, like, you gotta, you gotta be at, you gotta be at a hundred the whole time. I love that lady. I yeah. love her. Did you hire her, Uncle Frank? Who? You gave her her first shot. Um, yeah, I, I, Aisha is my daughter. You know, oh. I love Aisha. <laughs> we fight like family. I gave the daughter you know, too. <laughs> yeah, she, she, she's amazing. She's, she's incredible. You know, yes. you know, I have I have a, a funny story for, about her. We had done t the Today Show in New York, right? Mm -hmm. And Aisha hadn't worked with us for a while. Okay. And I had a new, uh, a new bunch of girls. And right. They were these really skinny girls, and uh, and I had hired Aisha for it. And, and, you know, Aisha had been doing a movie called Striptease or something, uh -huh. so she wasn't around. But she, so we hired her for that. And and she almost fell doing the show, and she, and and she, the reason she almost fell, she says, "Frank, 
I'm sorry, but I didn't eat because all these skinny bitches were out here, hun. <laughs> I laughed so hard, you know, but uh, it was just a great story. I, you have to be there to understand. I hope it made you laugh a little bit. Yes, I, it did make I'm still laugh. laughing to this day. And <laughs> she was serious. You know, she was like, you know, she hit it, though. She was killing it. But, you know, she, 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 got, she got it. Huh? Is that hard to do, Uncle Frank, that transitions? Because I noticed that a lot of dance. What transition? I'm sorry. Like when when artists want to change their dancers. Like, is that hard to do? Yeah. Yeah. Because they know, like, and, 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 I, you know, I, but you know what, but 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 what what's always a compliment though is when the artist goes back to them. Yes. Yeah. You know, they they may didn't hire them on this tour, but they come back because they remember that energy. So let me so our dancer has to be professional, always do their job, don't be negative, be negative over there, don't be negative in here. You right. Know, and you will never be forgotten. So let me ask you something, Uncle Frank. What's the decision? Because I know, like Janet, for an example, it was always like two girls that she always kept. Yeah. Like, how's that decision made for different artists? Like I'm pretty sure it's because that those two dancers kept her lifted. Okay. You understand? Then some dancers get hired, I mean, fired because they're messy or the agent wants more money. Oh. They don't feel like they're being treated correctly. It's a lot of reasons. You know, right. maybe maybe I'm not the choreographer no more, or the director, then this choreographer director wants their click. It's so many things. Oh, okay. Okay, Uncle Frank. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so this is the part of the show, okay? Because we're winding down. We got to get up out of here. So this is the part. I'm having a good time, man. Me too. So yeah, this yeah. is the part of the show where we do moments and memories. So right now, I'm going to show Uncle Frank a picture. Um, and the picture is some work that he was involved in, of course, the work that he was involved in. And he's going to tell us what was going on at that moment. And he's going to give us the experience of that memory. You ready, Uncle Frank? Is it going to make me emotional? Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Oh, uh, that's Cinderella, Salt and Pepper, In Vogue. Randy Connors is dancing with Spinderella, and that's that's what a man, uh, you know, in Vogue, Tom Pepper featuring in Vogue, an incredible day. Shout out to Matthew Ralston, the director. I won an MTV award with that, me and Randy. Oh. Right there. Best choreography. Did you choreograph the chair part, Uncle Frank? No, that's that's Randy's part. I did yeah. all of in Vogue stuff, and I taught uh, Tom Pepper the in Vogue choreography that they needed to do. So oh, it was. Okay. It was that's a collaboration. That's called co-choreographing. Oh, okay. All right. So here we go. Here's another moment. Oh, free your mind. Oh, <laughs> incredible. This is this is when I knew In Vogue had made it. This is Free Your Mind. Um, um, Mark Romantic directed it. It was the most amazing set I had ever seen in my life. You know, uh, it was amazing. Free Your Mind, In Vogue. Another MTV award. That's weird. That one, yeah. that one MTV award too. Oh, okay. Yeah. What about this one, Uncle Frank? Oh, wow, you funny. <laughs> you know, I'm dancing in this. I know, I know. <laughs> uh, this is this is a job with uh, R. Kelly. It's uh -huh. called Living Single. Uh, I had flown to L I mean to Chicago to choreograph this on R. Kelly, and and he told me I need to get out there and dance with them. <laughs> and, it was, and and all I got all my young dance like this Sarah in it and Anthony's in it and Brian's in it and they were like Frank you dance and I said yeah so that's the last time I danced. <laughs> awesome. Wow. This is the actual last time you danced. Yes, yes, that's the living single. Oh, okay. Well, I, well, I can see me on the little uh, uh, grapevine step. Oh. And, uh, and my frat brother choreographed this Benny Boom. I mean, oh. I choreographed, it, directed it. Yeah, I, Benny I Boone choreographed it. Good. Kelly. Benny Boone is good. Good director. Benny Boone directed it. Yes, he's real good director. Okay. Yeah. Here we go, Uncle Frank. Oh, <laughs> crazy in love. Yeah, crazy. I love these girls too, Uncle Frank. I love these yeah. set of girls. These, oh, that, that's Carmeet over there. She's incredible. She's, she was in Pussycat Doll. That's Ebony. That's Renice. That girl right behind Beyonce with the hat on, straight ahead with the beige in her jacket. We, that girl can dance. Oh my God. That's Aisha. That's a young Aisha with the uh, fedora on. Yeah. That's, that's, that's uh, yeah. Oh. So,
So, uh, Uncle Frank, who was responsible for the uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh? You know, it, it was me fooling around. <laughs> you know, uh, but Beyonce did not want to do that. She did. She, she thought it wasn't classy. You know, she was a good, you know, down home Houston girl. But, but me and Lavelle just kept coming back to that step. We were like, you know, this got to be it, you know. And I got into push up position and I made my ass do that because I couldn't do it unless I was in push up position. It's really weird, you know. Uh, and I would joke around, but it kept coming back. Uh, 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 uh. And they don't even do it well like people do it today. Uh, but, 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 but we said to Beyonce, let's get some baggy pants. Let's get some professional girl dancers and it'll work. And that's how it, it got in the video. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay, what about this, Uncle Frank? Wow, this is fun. Oh, check up on it. <laughs> uh, that's Hype Williams directed that. Lavelle Smith choreographed it uh, with me. Um, it, it was a hard video to do because we didn't have a lot of time. Check up on it. Daniel Polanco, an incredible dancer's in it. Mm -hmm. Aisha's in it. Uh, the Aisha you love, she's in it. And yes. then there's another young lady, Leslie, you know, who used to dance with Usher, she's in it. Oh, okay, yes. And I remember Danielle. Danielle breakout breakout moment was it touch for Omarion? Yeah, but Danielle had danced with Beyonce on the MTV Awards too in two thousand three as a young eighteen year old. Oh, wow. Danielle's incredible. She's like our. She's, she's probably one of the best dancers in the world to me. Mm hmm. She is great. Here we go, Frank. What about this? Oh, ring the alarm. Yeah. Do you, do you know I'm in this video too? Where you at in this video? I'm a dancer. I'm, I'm, I'm one of the guys pulling her down the hallway, holding her arms. Oh, okay. And she's trying to fight us. Uh -huh. you know, yeah. You know, and also, um, Tiana Taylor, Uh huh. she was on set helping that day. Oh, wow. You don't know that. Yeah. Oh, I, think I love that, these conversations. The man. chicken noodle suit was a big dance, and we wanted to understand it, and she knew okay. how to do it really well. Oh, okay. Uh, Tiana. Uncle Frank, is it exhausting working with Beyonce? Because I heard um, with Frank, I mean, not Frank, Ty Hunter said it was a point where he was working with Beyonce for three years straight and she yeah. he haven't had a break. Right, yeah. that you know, but, but, but that's how you want it to be. You don't want to come to no rehearsal and be wasting your time and artists over there being boring. Like, I loved it. I mean, we did. We didn't sleep. She works fifteen-hour days, twenty-hour days. Uh, you know, she forgets to take breaks. I have a story about that. I remember. You know, you know, you know who Peanut is? The choreographer. She danced with Janet Jackson. Short hair, cut girl, can dance her ass off. Her name is Bethany Strong. Is that the? She, yeah, she danced with Janet in Super Bowl. I know that. She danced in the Tony Braxton video I did once. She's in. She's in our freakum dress. Uh, she's worked with Brandy when I did the Brandy tribute uh, for Soul Train. That's, the one that create, that's not the one that choreographed. Does it really matter what the man is saying? That, that's not her. It, no, that's no. Shawnette. That's Shawnette. I'm sorry. Yeah, but she, she, Shawnette and Peanut know each other. But Peanut is Peanut. Okay. Bethany Strong. Look her up on there. But, but she, she worked with me in 2003 when Beyonce, we were taking Beyonce through ballet. We took Beyonce into ballet classes. Okay. You know, that's when her dancing got stronger, if you notice. After okay. after Crazy in Love, her dancers, her dancing got stronger. But, Pe but Peanut and Lavelle Smith, we were in the room. And and Peanut and I, like, we, okay, we were rehearsing all day, right? Mm -hmm. And in some way, Beyonce had an important phone call. So we finally took a break, but we probably had been rehearsing nonstop for six hours. Wow. And Peanut smoked cigarettes back then, okay? okay. So we go outside, she gets the cigarette, and she goes, Frank, <laughs> that bitch works so hard, she don't even piss. And it never dawned on me because I just loved it. You yeah. Know? yeah. You, you're not wasting your time. Just imagine you're at rehearsal and you're waiting an hour to do something, or you're waiting in the corner you ain't doing. But when you just work, like this interview, we, we, I know, I don't know if you feel the same way I feel. This could just go on and on. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. you know, for me, you know, because yeah. it's fun and, and, and it's real. Yeah. And that's how it is to work with a Beyonce. When it's fun and it's real, you don't mind all the work. Wow. 
That's amazing. Okay, so here we go, Uncle Frank. We still got a couple of more. Boom. Oh, run the world. Yes. <laughs> How was that, Uncle Frank? How long was y'all standing there, Uncle Frank? Yeah, we have we have 12 hours of footage from this video. Wow. You know, what, what the world will never see. And that's why I believe labels need to wake up. They need to let the audio go. Forget the audience. Forget the audio. People need to sell the footage. Mm. Can you imagine a good looking guy you've seen before, a good like looking girl you've seen before? A, 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 you, you want the whole dance stuff. Why can't the artist, why can't the consumer buy that? Mm. You understand? We have that footage. We have the entire run the world choreography. That's why single ladies is such a hit. They get to see all the choreography. High schools will buy the, 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 the footage. And, and, and the world shouldn't be, have you seen Brandy? Have you seen Beyonce? They I mean, the world shouldn't be, have you heard them? It should be, have you seen them? This is, you can look at this technology. We own Zoom or whatever, uh, 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 Facebook. You know, we, 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 the technology has changed. Nobody should, audio is gone. You can't make no more money streaming. Fuck streaming. Uh -huh. Like, June's Diary streamed a million copies of this. I think we got $3,000. But if June's Diary would have sold a million copies of this, it would be a million dollars. Okay? Uh -huh. Do you hear me? That's yes. simple math, right? Yes, yes. Okay. So, so I believe if you could sell the footage, the consumer would go in the store, buy a little flash drive, put it in their computer, and edit the footage, come to your party. I'd be like, what happened to Jay-Z and Crazy in Love, Frank? I took Jay-Z out. I just got the girl shaking their ass, and I got Beyonce singing Crazy in Love walking down the street. You get to edit the way you want to edit, just like when we were younger, you get to edit music how you want to hear it. Right. World, wake up. You should sell the footage. Yeah. Fuck audio. Yeah. <laughs> That's Uncle Frank. Are you going to get the audio with the footage? Right. That's right. 12 hours. So what y'all going to do with the rest of that footage? It's just sitting in the vaults. Mm. And is it is it choreography we never seen? It's, it's, it's stuff you never seen. It's, it's set up so the guys in this army, the girls in that army, Beyonce walking down the street, the Tofu Tofu guys killing it, Beyonce killing it. Danielle Polanco killing it, Aisha killing it, just Cheryl killing it, just everybody killing it. Just come on, you can buy that. Can you imagine if you could buy that? Mm. Can you imagine if you could buy outtakes of Thriller? Oh man, I will be broke. I will be broke because I will buy all of it. <laughs> no, you get you get you get all the outtakes for twenty five ninety nine. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and, and everybody will make money. The makeup yeah. artist makes money, and, and then get this. The producer of the song who wrote the song, they got to share their money and the royalties with the director because now the visual and the concept is just as important as the lyric and the audio. Mm. So now directors got to come up with great concepts. You understand? Right. It's a new world. We got to wake up. The people who are running the game don't get it. They, they, they're too busy trying to be stars. No disrespect to all of them, but some of them. Yeah, you right. You right, Uncle Frank. Mm, that's amazing. That is such a great idea. I <laughs> The Uncle Frank, but 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 I've done almost three hundred music videos in my life. I have look, I, I have drives and drives of footage. Mm. This is five TBs. What you call that? Terabytes? Is that what you call them? Mm -hmm. Like what's 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 this footage? In Vogue back in the day. Beyonce, Brandy, raw footage from some of the music videos. Wow. And I was just looking at this the other day. That's why I'm tripping. Tyrese. <laughs> wow. Nobody else. Sweet lady. Oh, wow. That's amazing, Uncle Frank. You know, and I hope I don't get in trouble for saying this, but something that I've always done, and hopefully I can help it when I make my movie, like most artists would always have me go with the director to re-edit the video when it wasn't right, especially when it came to the dancing. Uh-huh. Well, I have all raw footage of every video I ever done. That's amazing. Does that make sense? That makes a lot of sense. You should have. I have hours and hours of single ladies. I have hours and hours of uh, soldier. I have hours and hours of the new borderline video. I have hours and hours of uh, uh, just anything that I've done. That's amazing. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. So what about this, Uncle Frank? Boom. Oh, I was just getting ready to say Usher. Uh, shout out to Billy Woodruff. You make me wanna. Now you know this concept of Usher, the, the multi-ushers, mm -hmm. that concept came up. I was walking with Todd Sams. Todd Sams choreographed for Usher. 
Okay. So um, Jamal and Rosero worked on this video with me and Usher and Todd. And I was walking on Sixth Avenue in New York and I saw three mannequins standing like that in the window. And that's how I came up with that concept right there. Oh, that's amazing. That's creative directing. That's creative directing. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is. And of course, I couldn't do this without putting boom right there. <laughs> yeah. But once again, I'm just a dancer in this. You could have right. shot with me in it, at least. No, I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> Did you do the lean part, Uncle Frank? Huh? Did you do this lean part with them? Uh, no, I, I was, I was like, come on, I was fresh off the boat. Those were, those were dance. That was clickish back then. Okay. I was lucky to get all the little shots I got. I had been in LA for three days. Right. You know, uh, shoot, I had been in LA three, three days, you know, right. and so they auditioned for that section and, oh, okay. and people who should have gotten that section didn't get it, but, oh, okay. but right. they auditioned on the set for that section to be right. in that section. Yeah. Have you ever had a moment where the artist came to you after they finished a concert or a video or anything and they said, Frank, I don't think I did a good job. How do you handle those moments? Well, that happens a lot. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Like, give us a story. Who did that? I, I don't think I should give names on that. Don't give names, but just you know, don't give names. Uh, uh, how you handle it. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm honest. And I'll say, yeah, you didn't. <laughs> you know? that's right and, and i'm glad that you know you didn't you know but that's why we got to rehearse better that's why you know you 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 got to be in rehearsal focus and and i'm just glad that they can admit that to themselves mm -hmm. okay? uh but normally i think that's my brand is i'm going to tell them anyway right because once again i learned from michael jackson let's make history and we can't make it's history by lurking we can't we can't make history by not bringing it Right. You, you you understand? And there's some artists that get on stage and, and they're on stage like, do they like me? Do they like me? You can't do that. You got to get lost. You got to, you know, like, like, have you ever heard of somebody like being so caught up, they break their ankle, but they realize they didn't break their ankle until they get off stage? Uh -huh. they, they, uh -huh. they broke the ankle. Okay. And uh -huh. so that's really getting lost in the movement and getting lost in the moment, you know? Uh, yeah. But there's a lot of artists that second guess something, you know, but sometimes you can fix it in the edit. Right. If, if, if it's TV, you know, the edit can fix it and make it look more believable. You know, I've had, you know, I don't know why I got to tell you this. I've, I've fought a lot of directors when they call a girl ugly, not an artist, but maybe a dancer that I hired. Uh, and I would have to fight with the director. I say, but she will dance her way to pretty. Oh, I like that. Uncle. I got to write that down, Uncle Frank. I like that. Yeah. Yes. I like that. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Some people are so incredible. And I think people just don't know what beauty is. Beauty is all kinds of things. Beauty is art. Mm -hmm. Beauty is art. Mm -hmm. mm -mm -mm. That was a great one, Uncle Frank. I like that. Uncle Frank, a lot of people in the comments are saying this. There's okay. comments? They Yeah, they saying you definitely. Why can't I see the comments? Oh, there they are? Yeah. They say you need to write a book. They are enjoying this, Uncle Frank. There's yeah. How yeah. do I can I see this later to see if I look crazy yeah. and sound crazy? Yes, these comments. You, you, you save it or something? Yes, it stays up on YouTube, Uncle Frank. Oh, do I get a dollar per view? No. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I mean, like, I wish I did. I wish I did. <laughs> but no, no, no. I just found out from the girls of June's Diary. Uh -huh. Like they they called me the other day. Said Frank, our video isn't set up on YouTube to get the money to go to the right account. And that's when I found out just the other day. Uh huh. That people are getting money from YouTube yeah, when it gets. From, a, but people like me don't really get money because Uncle Frank, I curse too much. So they. Oh, I'm sorry for cursing. Did I, I no, curse? no, I don't. Cur Uncle Frank, I curse like a motherfucker. So it's okay. Oh, okay, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's okay. It's okay. It's not but, but people do monetize it, right? Yeah, people do monetize off of YouTube. A lot of people do monetize, but you gotta. Okay. It's it's a control thing. Like you gotta you gotta speak a certain way for sponsors can be put in your video. Okay, okay so let me be really stupid right now. Okay, can I? Go ahead. Okay, if you go to my Instagram at Frank Gatson, uh -huh. and if you like me and Lonnie's interview, 
it's, it's, a, it's a dollar sign say Frank gets is a cash app. And it was for something else. Give us a dollar and I'm going <laughs> to fit it with Lonnie, okay? And I feel like he should make money because I've, I've enjoyed myself. I wish he had a TV show right now. I wish he was oh, on Netflix. You know, so HBO, because this brother is so honest and he's so like genuine. And what's that word that everybody uses? Authentic. You know, yeah. he's, he, you know he's that. And, 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 and he needs a show. And so... Yeah. So much, Uncle. I appreciate. Now that. I swear I'll spit it with you, okay? Because I want my appearance fee too, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it says it's on my Instagram, everybody. Okay, I want to see if I get two dollars today. <laughs> you know, is that right? Is that, is that tacky? No, Uncle Frank, it's not tacky. It's a <laughs> pandemic. You got to do what you got to do. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just, I want to know why you ain't making money on this. That's why. Sure. Okay, Uncle Frank. So look, so I have a couple of questions and then we're going to get out of here. So Uncle Frank, so my question is, do you have a personal relationship with the artists you work with? Like, can you call them and be like, girl, what you doing today? Yes. Wow. But I, I, I try not to do it that much because um, I feel like probably too many people are doing that. Mm hmm you know, wanting to hang out with them for the wrong reason. Like, I prefer them to call me and say, Frank, we going to uh, Popeye's. You want to go? You know, yeah. I like that, you know. Uh, and also something I do after a set, artists get mad at me. As soon as we rap, I'm out. Okay, I disappear like that, okay? <laughs> you know, and- uh, As soon as we rap, oh, you mean like when the job is over? Like when you do a music video, or like even like, once again, I, because I just did it the other day when Todrick and Brandy rap. I brought the cake out with the lady who had the cake for Brandy, and then I just kind of disappeared. And then people like Brandy, for they'd be like, "Why didn't you say bye?" I said, I, I, "You know, I, I, I'll say bye. You know, I meant bye, but I just wanted to let you do you because I know a lot of people are going to be trying to take pictures and all that kind of stuff. But I just find like I'd rather hang out with an artist privately, you know, like in their home, you know, after the show, in the dressing room, because there's so many people that you could see around them blowing smoke up their ass. And I don't like that. Mm. You know, I like I like real people to be around the artists that I work with because the artists they need that. Because something I've learned about people who are stars, you know what the you know what a drug is that none you and I don't understand. What's that? Fame. Like no, like just imagine people blowing smoke up your ass all the time. Right. Yeah. yeah. You got that's a drug that you don't even realize is coming at you. Right, right. You, you, so, so I feel like artists they need honest, loving people around them, not these people who want to get on, you know, who will try to marry them or try to be around them just because they're famous. They need, they need love, and that's right. why so many artists are so strange. You know, that's why Michael was strange. Uh -huh. Can you imagine all the people that wanted to get something from him? Right. You know. That's why he loved hanging around with young people because young people are just really, they're not affected. Right. They just right. fun and eat the good old hamburger. I mean, oh, when I went to Never Neverland, <laughs> I, I, I ordered hamburgers in the, he, I stayed across from his house. Uh -huh. I don't know why I enjoyed I, I ordering hamburgers at three in the morning. I don't know why. It just was something about it. And then when I went into the theater, he had milk duds. Do you know what milk duds are? Yes, milk duds are delicious. Yes, he had those. He had fresh popcorn. So, I understood Michael. He, he's a great guy, but yet, but he just, just, but the people were always wanting something. People always want something. People, so I just, all I want the artists to do is to bring it on stage. That's it. Yes, that's it, and that's all. Yeah. But I like that, and I understand that what you mean by not being around all the time and just go. Because I'm like that too. After I do what I do, I just go. Like right. I don't really like hanging out with artists at clubs and stuff like that. Right. Right. You know, I'm like you. I like private time, watching movies, and right. you know, having general conversation. Yeah, like, well, we be ourselves completely. Yeah, I, when, you make, when you're hanging out with artists in public, there's cameras on you. You know, there's all kind of stuff. Right, right. Yeah, so I totally understand that. Have you ever been a moment like every artist that you have worked with? Can you go back and work with them? Oh, um, I don't know. That's up to them. Oh, okay. You know, like you know, we don't just go work with them. They you know they they need to they say continue working with us. They right. got to call us out of nowhere and want to work with us. You know, mm -hmm. um, I I you know I would love to work with Rihanna again. I just got to put that out there. Yes. You know that. What's so really cool about her? When she walks in the room, she lights the motherfucker up. 
<laughs> like I remember the first time I met her, it, she, it was her, Tierra Marie, and a Emery. They had done a tribute to Destiny's Child. Yep, I remember. I remember. Yeah, I missed the first day of rehearsal, but she came the second day of rehearsal. And uh, I looked, I'm like, who the hell is that? And you know, and nobody saw it but me. I have she to say, wasn't even big that she wasn't even big back then. Was she Uncle Frank? But she was Rihanna. Yeah. Okay. You know? Okay. And so we hit it off like brother and sister. You know, I did SOS Unfaithful, and I did her Cover Girl tour. But 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 I, but we we just clicked that day. I never forget it. Oh my God, I love her. And 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 then I did Only Girl. That's the last video I did with her. It's Only Girl. Okay. And so skip ahead after we did the tribute to Destiny's Child. I'm at the Vibe Awards show. Somebody taps me on the shoulder and I look behind, it was Rihanna. And she says, Frank, I got it. And I said, what? I said, I got this album, I need you. And, and it was just beautiful. I, I, I miss her. Oh, that's so amazing. And she, has, and, and she hasn't done her great work yet. You know, mm. it's like, 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 the, like those are two people, like Brandy and her, that I want to prove to the world something with them, those two. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? People, they don't got it completely yet. Mm. I went to her last concert, Uncle Frank, in DC. With the, with all the white stuff? Yeah. Uh huh. Oh. I went to that one when she had the guys up there voguing. Yeah, but I, I went to that concert too in Newark. Mm. And I went backstage like a groupie. And then she came up to me. We have it's a picture of me and her on Instagram from that concert. And, she's, and, and I tell her, this, that was incredible. But, you know, uh, but once again, you know, different management, different clicks. Mm. They may not want me to come around her no more. You just you don't know what it is. But I know I would love to work with her again. As I know, I don't, I don't want to choreograph or nothing like that. I just want to be the creative director of her next venture. Yes. Yeah. Wow, Uncle Frank. Yes. So, out of all of the artists that you have worked with, who you work with the most, Uncle Frank? Right now, it would be in Vogue, Brandy, and and uh, June Starry. Okay. So mm -hmm. let me ask you this: Out of all of the artists that you have worked with. What's something that you cherish the most that you have got from them? Loyalty. You know, even if an artist doesn't want to work with you, you can still be their friend. Yes. You don't have to, you know, maybe your choreography or your vision is whack now. Okay. Right. But 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 I feel like if I work with someone in my life and I give every chromosome of them, me to them. Don't forget me. Wow. Yeah. And they're loyal to you, Uncle Frank. Right. Mm. Don't forget me because I help you get there. Right. Yes. Thank you so much, Uncle Frank, for being here. Oh, I appreciate it so much. This was amazing. I'm going to watch this 53 times. <laughs> oh, wow. And I can, how do I get the, oh, it's going to be on YouTube, you said, right? It's going to be on YouTube, but I'm going to send you the link. Don't you worry. I'm going to send you the link and the instructions to show you how to work it. You know I got you. So can, I'm, you, can you do beauty work on my face? You, <laughs> everything is fine. Everything is fine. You know, you know, I work with these girls. You know, they always doing beauty work, and they you know why not? <laughs> everything is fine, Uncle Frank. First of all, it was an honor to have you here. You my are industry, dance, creative, artistic director legend, and I'm just so excited that you choose to be here with me. This means so much to me, you yeah. know, and I appreciate you for that, Uncle Frank. Yeah, but when you get your show, I want to be a producer on it. Can I? Uncle Frank, I'm going to call you. I'm okay. going to call because you I want to help behind the scenes, you know, because you, you're incredible, bro. Thank you. I want, I want to, I want, you know, I want something breathtaking for opening. I want a breathtaking yeah. opening. <laughs> How do you want your set, though? You want it to be a living room? Yeah, oh yeah, that we or oh, maybe a front porch. Maybe. Oh. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Some tea. yeah. Some iced tea, some good ass sweet iced tea, huh? Yeah, yeah. and all my guests be walking past and come on the front porch and have a conversation with me. Future. Yes. <laughs> See, I, I, got, I gotta put that in patent because I wonder why steal that from me, Uncle Frank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I don't. I don't believe in that. Let me, to me, when people steal stuff I did, that's flattery. Yes, that is. That is. You understand that? Because yeah. you gonna do it your way, right? Mm. They're not gonna do it. You know, come on, think about it. Who cares? That's that, that's the best compliment ever when someone does something that you, 
you know, kids. Is there anything you haven't done that you would like to do besides working with Rihanna? <laughs> oh, I told you that earlier. Uh, I want to bring back the movie musical. Oh, yeah. I have a great concept about a, a, a brother and sister musical. Well, no, I, I mean, like any artist other than Rihanna that you would like to work with. Well, I've worked with everybody I really want to work with. Yeah, uh, I was some, to say that. Uh, there's somebody that I did. Have you, with Mariah? have you ever worked with Mariah? Of course I have. I did a, 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 a Pepsi commercial with her. What about I, Whitney? No, I almost danced for Whitney. I auditioned for one of her shows. I met Whitney before because of Brandy. Mm -hmm. um, but I never did a job for her. I just know her. Uh, but there's somebody I do want to work with, though. Why, why won't they come to me? I would love to work with Doja Cat. A doja cat. Okay, she is, you know what, Uncle Frank? She is good. Yeah, I know. Yeah, she yeah. is a good artist. I, 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 I saw her, you know. Um, yes. You know, shout out to her choreographer. He's incredible. Yeah, um, she's good. Uh, but I don't want to choreograph because I think that's what happens too. When I come into the room, sometimes people think that I'm trying to take their job. I'm more on the creative direction part now. Right. Okay. I, you know, I do, I do steps. You know, I, I did some steps for Brandy because she made me the other day. Uh, <laughs> you know, but, but, but I, I like creative direction, and, uh, and like I said, I'm working with an artist now. And you will see. You're gonna I say, "Wow!" Well, and you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna laugh. You're gonna love it. Okay. Okay. And they're really close to you. You know. Oh, okay. So, oh. Don't say nothing. I'm okay. down. I'm down. Okay. okay, but, 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 but I'm, I'm very excited about this, this artist. So okay. excited. Okay. Uh, yeah. But, 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 oh, I know what I want to do. I want to make a, a male group. Oh, okay. I, I, I wish that Kelly and I would have had a second season. A second season. You know, like, can you well, imagine? Can you what, that, Uncle, Uncle Frank, why they didn't give you guys a second season? I guess we weren't good. We didn't get the ratings weren't good. Uh, uh, I don't know. You know, maybe they didn't like us, you know, <laughs> I don't know. But we were going to put together a male group the second season, you know, with, with, with June Starry helping. But, um, but, but I just think like just imagine someone like a Lou Jean James or Trevor Jackson, or Jake and Lattimore in the same damn group, you know, yeah. and some kid named B Smith down there in Atlanta, you know. Uh, come on, like why isn't there a good-looking, talented, male black group? Mm. What's wrong with you executives? Right, that is a no-brainer. They say, well, you know, well, a lot of people say that male groups don't work because it always be one yeah. diva. No, you just get everybody talented. Uh -huh. It's just like playing basketball again. If you got a starting five that everybody got a good game, good guard, a good forward, you need the same thing in the fucking male group. Uh -huh. Think about it. Yeah. I think that's what makes June's diary work. They all can sing lead. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, they all have their beauty in their own right. You know, that was part of me helping put that girl group together. You know, you, come on, it's, it's simple. Right. Everybody always makes things be a problem. Fuck that. It's simple. Right. Get your five guys who have their ego in check. All of them can get pussy how they want to get it. Right. You know, whatever they right. enter. You know, right. no jealousy will happen then. That's right, Uncle Frank. Yes. You are the uncle the industry needs. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Uncle Frank, for being here. I appreciate you. Anything you need me for, you know I'm right here. I love you. Keep being great. Keep being a trendsetter. Keep putting people in the position to work because you do that a lot. A lot of people you have employed and a lot of people we know because of you. And thank that you. is amazing to me. That is amazing. Thank you. That's my favorite. And, part. and, and shout out to Involve for putting me on. Yes, yeah, shout out to Invoke for putting Uncle Frank on. I love Invoke, okay? Yes. Well, thank you, Frank. Thank you so much. I'm going to send you this link. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you. And you have a great day. You too. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> Y'all give it up for Uncle Frank. Yeah. That was amazing, okay? I'm so glad that y'all enjoyed it. Oh, y'all talking, okay? Yes, okay? Not pussy how you get it, <laughs> okay? Here we go, brilliant interview. Thank y'all so much. Yes, okay? Thank you, Lonnie. And Frank, oh, thank you, yes. Y'all love, oh, yeah. Uncle Frank was amazing on here. He was amazing on here. Yes, thank y'all so much for tuning in for today's show. I appreciate y'all so much, yes.
All right, y'all make sure y'all go share Uncle Frank. I mean, mm, show him some love on his Instagram, okay? You don't forget to send him that dollar, okay? Yeah, he says, send him that dollar, okay? He gonna spend it with me. Send him that dollar, okay? <laughs> yes, thank y'all so much, okay? Mm -hmm. Uncle Frank didn't want to leave us. Uh-uh, he did. He did. Legendary. Oh, thank you. Great interview, Lonnie. Thank you so much, Jason. Yeah, oh, that's my homeboy, Jason. Yes, thank you so much. Loved it. Awesome, Judy. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What's his cash app? It's going to be on his Instagram, okay? Um, His Instagram is at Frank Gaskins Jr. I think that's what it is, at Frank Gaskins Jr., okay? Mm -hmm. Or you could just Google it and say, what's Frank Gaskin Jr.'s Instagram? And it will show you if you Google it. Yes, okay? Mm -hmm. Frank Gaskin on IG. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank y'all so much. We need a part two. You like that, Abity? Did you like that? That was a good one. It was so much wisdom. That's right, Miss Callie. It was so much wisdom. Yes, so proud. This was amazing. Yes, it was. Yes, Lonnie, you doing your motherfucking thing. I, I, I can see how Tracy said that. Lonnie, you doing your motherfucking thing. Yes, another great interview. No, this is how she said it. Lonnie, you doing your motherfucking thing. Clap, 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 clap. Another great interview. <laughs> That's how Tracy said. <laughs> Thank you, Tracy. Yes. Mm -hmm. What you think about this title? Porch Chronicles with Lonnie B. Oh, y'all already put it together. Shit. Y'all already speaking it into existence. Yes. Okay. Can't wait for the next interview. You busy, Lonnie. This was the interview. Oh, thank you so much. You know, I love the fact that y'all say that every interview. Y'all be like, Lonnie, no, this was the best. Lonnie, this was good. That means that we evolving, bitch. We getting better. Okay. And look at me. My skin just a glowing. Okay. I look like a piece of pig feet. Look at me, y'all. I look like a piece of pig. Yes, okay. Thank y'all so much, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, there it is. That's Frank Gaskins. Oh, that's his um cash app. Okay, yes. All right, yes. All right, thank y'all so much. So the reason why I wanted to talk to Frank, you know, I know y'all be looking for the other type of shit, but mm, I be looking for knowledge and wisdom. And then, you know, dance is my first love. You know, back in the day, okay, back in the day, okay, with my legs, okay, when my legs were sparkling like ballet tights. Yes, okay, I will get on that floor, okay, bitch, you know, I will hit it back in that day. All right, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a goal. I wanted to dance with Michael. You see, I wanted to dance with Michael. Okay, but the Lord called Michael home, okay? But he in here with me, talking to me every now. He's proud of Frank. Ain't you, Mike? Mm -hmm. Y'all in him, but I did. He said, want to sing in a song of Michael's song. That's what he just said. Okay, y'all in him, I do. We have a relationship in him. Okay, yeah, so I love the fact that I got that knowledge with Frank and I. I probably want to talk to other dancers, you know, in the industry so we can, you know, learn other things because I feel like that those people in the background, because that's what they like to label them as, the people in the background, okay, the behind the scenes folks, which they're not, okay, I want to like spread some light on them, okay, it's because of their existence and their creativity that make your favorite artists look like they look today, and that's why it was important for me to get Frank up here, okay, Uncle Frank, okay, yeah, for me to get him up here, yeah, so that's why I really, really wanted to get him up here, mm-hmm, okay, somebody said, mm. That was your longest interview, two hours, wasn't Miss Raw? Okay, it was two hours long. Yes, okay, this was so inspiring. Thank you, Ebony. Yes, Ebony, just keep getting through. Thank you, Ebony. Yes, okay. Somebody said, you're a natural interviewer. Oh, I appreciate that. Yes, okay, I appreciate that. Yes, thank y'all so much for being here. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me see what Wanda said. Wanda said, great interview. Lonnie, you had great questions. Thank you, Wanda. I appreciate that. Yes, yes, knowledgeable. Okay, knowledge. I'm sorry, I'm adding words to shit, bitch. Ebony, you just keep getting through. Yes, knowledge, wisdom, and dancing don't get no better than that. Thank you, Ebony. You just keep getting through. You know somebody down at the front desk. You know somebody at the front desk. Ebony, just keep getting through. Mm -hmm. Somebody said, I sent that cash out. Okay, <laughs> everybody send that dollar. <laughs> Somebody say, yes, get Debbie Allen. Okay, Debbie got to want to come on here. Debbie got to want to come on here. Okay, Debbie got to want to come on here. Mm -hmm. And then I want to say this. If you're paying attention to these virtual conversations, the people that I have come on here, they know of me. 
You know what I'm saying? They know of me like they watched. And then, you know, you see what he said when I seen you in that video. So we formed a relationship through them watching me. So that's how a lot of them came on here, you know, because they knew of me and I was a fan of theirs. And, you know, we exchanged words and voila, they were here. You know, yes. All right. Thank y'all so much. Mm -hmm. Somebody said they need the recognition too. Yes, they do. Somebody said, I love watching you. Thank you. I appreciate you being here. Somebody said, how about, oh, come on now. You go, oh, 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 oh come on now, Andy. Andy go for the gold. How about Patty, Andy? If Patty LaBelle pop up on this screen, that's the grandfather. Andy, I will be on this floor. Mike will have to come off that pitch and pick me up. Mike will have to come off that frame and pick me up and Patty come on that screen. Okay, yeah. Okay, because the first thing I'm going to say, grandmother sing. Grandmother sing. Okay, that's the first thing I'm going to say. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but thank y'all so much. I appreciate y'all so much. Somebody said, this is the best interview. I've seen this far. You have just interviewed a true part of Black history. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you, Crystal. Yes, okay. Thank y'all so much for being here. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Okay, share this video. Like this video. Subscribe to this channel so you can keep up with all Lonnie B things. All right, yes. Y'all have a great day. And remember, let no bitch upset you, not one. And if no one told you they love you today, one thing that you need to know and always know and never forget, that your duty on duty, Lord E.B. loves you. See y'all next time. <laughs>Friends, homeboys, haters, pickable bitches, nieces, and nephews. B Manage brings you the international Judy on Duty, Lonnie B. That's me, okay? In a live show that you won't forget called Behind the Mask. Do they love you or the mask you wear every day? It's coming, girl. It's coming on Sunday, March the 14th, and Sunday, March the 21st, okay? 2021. There's going to be two shows on both days, 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. You want to get your tickets today at www.LonnieBYourJudy.com. Now, this will be a COVID-friendly environment. Bring your mask, okay? And your hand sanitized. And if you don't come with your hand sanitized, we going to sanitize you. Girl, get the lights off, okay? Yes. And we got masks for you, too. It's going to be at a secret location in the DMV area. Yes! We're going to check your temperature, too, okay? Is you hot or do you need to eat some? Because you got to go, girl. Yes, okay? I can't wait to see you as we discover the love and laughter all behind the mask. See you there. Get your tickets today at www.LonnieBYourJudy.com. Good morning, bitch. It's me, Lonnie B, the gay one. Air conditioned. You see it. Watch it blow, girl. Yes. I'm here to tell you about my online store, the Good Good Girlfriend Corner Store, bitch. You can get all of your merchandise at the Good Good Girlfriend Corner Store, okay? Bitch, we got masks. We got air conditioning. You see it, girl. Go cop it, bitch, okay? We got everything that you need at the Good Good Girlfriend Corner Store. We get new items every month. I want you to check it out, bitch. Go now before the shit go quick. Seriously.